And here's one of the real fun things. It turns out that you can search all the data at one time. So now we're going forward and we're saying, gee, I want to do some market research. How do I begin to understand some things? And um, I'm just going to pick a technology at random unless somebody has something they want me to use. Anybody have anything you want me to use, or should I just plow ahead? Hemodialysis. Chemo. Chemo, as in blood. Oh, hemo. H-E-M-O. Wow. There we are. Somebody must have asked me for that before. I did. <laughs> How about that? And there we have our results. And as we can see, there's, the results come in a couple of areas. So let's look at what we have here. The data warehouse uh, is all the open source data that we collect from the reports we do. We do roughly six to 800 reports a year for the federal government, universities, foundations in the US and around the world. So it gives us a large amount of data. Let's just say we were looking at uh, uh, applications for hemodialysis. Here's a report that we can open up. And what we'll see is we'll get a bunch of information on what's going on. Here's the end users, uh, criteria people are looking at, people we can contact if we have questions, uh, user requirements, regulations as of the date of this report. Here's the competing technology out there. Uh, this is patents. We just saw products. Here's uh, R&D. Uh, here's the market size, what's going on in the market, drivers. So there's lots and lots of places to network, lots and lots of information in all the footnotes. Different reports have different information in them. And one of the things that's important is not only to search on the name of what something is, but also on the functionality. So if it was, exact, for example, if I was measuring particulates in blood, I might search on measuring particulates or, or particulates and blood might be my search team, that term as well as hemodialysis. So I would search on both. So I get different things in these uh, reports depending upon um, what uh, the original report involved. And as I go into more recent reports, what's, what happens is as the data tends to be more extensive, the more recent reports, and that's because in the old days we did not ask the experts, can we redisseminate your data? Uh, now we do, and that makes it possible to uh, put uh, what they tell us in there as well. Uh, obviously, we would not want to disseminate somebody's information without their permission. And then also, you'll see um, on some of these, there'll be targets. These are potential customers for you and what they're looking for and how they acquire technology and things like that. Every report will have a target section in it, the ultimate customer, your customer, or your the customer of your customer, uh, the person you're helping, the company you're helping. But they all have target sections in them. Not all of them have detailed profiles like this, but there will always be target information in almost everything we do unless it was specifically, we were specifically told not to collect target information. So that gives you an idea of the data warehouse. It's literally that data we've collected that's stored and is searchable. Now, we can also go in here and there are market overviews. And the market overviews are custom reports. In your organization, you get 10 custom reports a year. And I'm going to turn the microphone over so somebody can explain how you access a custom report. Uh, for the, uh, the ISBDC, if you just want to let the programming director know, uh, if you want to report, and uh, reports then will be submitted to Foresight to be developed, and um, at that point, then the, the report will be forwarded on to the party requesting that report. Terrific. All the reports will work with you to find a definition for the study that is generic enough that it doesn't give away your client's secret sauce, but is focused enough to be very useful. And so here's what the market overviews contain. You get a market size. You get the phase of the market, you know, is this a growth, an embryonic, is it a mature, a declining market, whatever, some information on that. How people are currently competing in that marketplace. Who are some of the major companies playing in the marketplace? And this is useful because later on, these are obviously customers for technology. 
or licensees, potential licensees. Here is regulations and standards are often there. They're not relevant in every field, but there they are. Uh, market barriers. Then we go down and there's market drivers. Here's some information on frequency of purchase that may have been very important to the person who requested this. And if there is something that's critical for the person you're helping, please let us know and we will try and accommodate that in the market overview. And of course, there are all the footnotes. So you get this information. So that is an example of a report that is made based upon a request. There are hundreds of these, uh, and it's they're all shared. It's on a sort of what goes around comes around system. Now, so can I interrupt for a moment? Wait. Um, so if I am dealing with a client who is interested in international markets specifically, can not a problem at all. We we can they can define the scope of the market overview. Perfect. Thank you. Phil, will you show the uh, form that's filled out? I know you have pointed questions. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you. Hold on two seconds. Uh, there is this form down here. Da, 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 da. And you click the new button. And there is how you fill out the market overview. For your purposes, however, the most important thing to remember is, when in doubt, don't get hung up on the system. Push the chat button. We're always there to help you. You're the customer. So if you have a problem, you push chat, and we will walk you through anything that needs to be walked through. Now, there is some other data in here. Let's say we were looking at blood, just to get a little bit more general term. Dang, how about that? I figured there would have been a roadmap for blood, but maybe not. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, well, let me just do this. I want to show you what Technology Roadmaps has in it. So we catalog all the roadmaps we can find. And they're all over the field. If you didn't find one, let's say we were looking for a roadmap involving hemodialysis, the trick is click chat, say, hey, you don't have a roadmap on hemodialysis. And one of the people in our biomedical group will go out and see if we can find one. And if not, they can point you to something that will help you understand what people are looking for. For By the way, for those of you who don't know what technology roadmaps are, these are put together by governments, associations, non-governmental asso associations, uh, uh, like the Red Cross or the World Health Organization. Uh, and they are authoritative statements about what people are looking for downstream as they, um, in the 5, 10, 15 year time framework that's necessary for advancing an industrial sector. And so you'll find a bunch of stuff in here that is very useful. And the companies that show up in the roadmaps and the organizations may be funding sources for you. So they're significant from that standpoint as well. Now, what we see now is we have three major sources of market research data, the technology roadmaps, the market overviews, and the data warehouse. The data warehouse is static. You can request market overviews. There is an unlimited, you get 10 overall for the organization. And there is an everything else down here, the technology roadmaps, you have an unlimited amount of requests you can make. There is also, over here, a tool that's useful, which is if you're working with a company and they have no idea what are the standards and regulations that apply to them, here is a list of all standards bodies that we could find as well as some ideas on where else you can go to search for more standards uh, and, and information as well. So we do have that for you built into here also. Using these three resources, you can do an amazing amount of market research. And the reason for that is you're not going to find everything you need in there. But what you will find are things that are close enough that you can begin to learn the jargon, learn the right terms, learn the issues that are going on in a sector. And from there, you can hop and do much smarter searching on the open web. And the nice thing is when you're ready to go to the open web, you just let us know, and we will help you do that and hold your hand. 